We've been talking a lot about what a sustainable power grid might look like. By now, you may wonder what it will feel like in your daily life. Let's look at Richard and his family, fictional characters from our near future. It's a work day. At 6.45 a.m., Richard's smartphone alarm rings. He taps on it, which is also a signal for his curtains to open. He heads to the bathroom, where the lights turn on as he steps in. Just like him, his house is coming to life. In the kitchen, the coffee maker turns on at 6.44. Mmm, that smells good. The sun is rising. On the rooftop, the solar panels start providing power to the house. While drinking his coffee, Richard makes a holographic call to his mom. It looks as if she's right there. It's time for Richard's kids to come downstairs. They're already awake, but immersed in their VR games. Reluctantly, they come down for breakfast. Richard and his wife head to work in their self-driving smart cars. While riding, Richard uses the time to study a presentation he has to make later. The car stops in front of a major office complex. Richard gets off and the car drives away. It parks in a basement garage where it connects to a charging pile. The sky has turned gray. Sudden weather changes are common in Richard City. His building is fitted with electrochromic windows that reflect light when voltage is applied to them. Light sensors have detected the change in conditions and an AI orders the windows to let more light in. The building's AI also keeps track of the weather forecast. At noon, it's expected to be sunny again. The building starts using the power stored in the basement's battery instead of relying on the grid. It's sunny again outside. While Richard and his colleagues are eating, solar panels all over the city generate a lot of power. Richard's car is charging. At a giant solar farm outside the city, some power is used to produce green hydrogen. The sun keeps on shining the whole afternoon. To save on air conditioning, the electrochromic windows dim the light that's coming through. At Richard's home, the main battery in the basement is fully charged. There are still three and a half hours of sunlight though. Power is sold to the grid. Soon, the money that the family spent on the panels five years earlier will be recovered. It's the end of the workday. Richard uses his smartphone to summon his car as he heads downstairs. Richard has picked up his kids at the soccer pitch. The whole family will be home before seven. The air conditioning in their home turns itself on. With everyone in their home all over the city, it's peak time for power use. In their homes, people are watching movies, playing games, cooking, warming the bath water, and many lights are on. Home batteries that are charged during the day start providing extra energy. Even the car battery is used. Richard is at his desk. He's booking a flight for the next day. He selects one that's powered by green hydrogen. This will earn him green credits that he can later sell on the open market. He is the last one to go to bed. With the push of a button, he turns off all the lights in the house. It's the middle of the night. In the business district, mobile phone base stations turn down their power as few people are around. Smart street lamps dim themselves, but they will brighten again if motion sensors detect movement nearby. The night is also when grid power is cheapest. In Richard's garage, the car is charging to be ready for the next day. That's more or less what living with a smart grid will feel like. Sustainability without compromise. And with the end of the day in Richard's life, we come to the end of this course. Congratulations for making it through. Farewell.